Well, Hong Kong and Shanghai hotels post a first half profit that more than doubled as higher revaluation of its property portfolio boosted its bottom line. The company owns the Peninsula Hotels globally, as well as Hong Kong's Peak Tram, which will soon get a capacity boost. Joining us now here in Hong Kong is the CEO, Clement Kwok. Clement, great to have you. Morning. Uh, it's, it's very interesting. Let's start off with the travel industry in general, because you mentioned in your earnings report a little bit about the uncertainty that we did see in the first half, whether it was U.S. travel restrictions, whether it was terrorist attacks in Europe. And yet underlying profit, you still were able to generate 19 percent growth. How'd you do it? Well, good morning. Thank you very much. Um, I'd start with Hong Kong. You know, about a year ago, you remember that sentiment was quite poor in Hong Kong, and people were worried that tourism would come down in Hong Kong and high-end retail sales would come down in Hong Kong. Now, at the time, we had feared that the decline might be quite large. But in fact, things have stabilized quite nicely. Hmm. And at the moment, we're seeing Hong Kong is quite stable with a reasonably good outlook, which is a lot better than it was well, a year ago. Well, retail sales were pretty much flat last month, though, wasn't it? Right. But people were worried a year ago that it might have been a lot worse oh, and that you know, sales bad. might have yeah. come down. Yeah. So first of all, I'd say that our main market, which is Hong Kong, is now pretty stable with um, a good outlook. So that is very important for us. Now, the other part of that is the global scene. And as you've pointed out, of course, travel is affected by, you know, security, by political events, and those we continue to have to deal with. I think all of us acknowledge that the world we live in now is quite uncertain. But what we do is we try and focus on the long term. We invest in our sure. properties and then we keep going. Clement, one of your key measures, of course, is your RevPAR, which is revenue per available room. And it was interesting. I mean, you had some big renovations in Chicago and Beijing. That certainly helped in those cities. Manila, I thought, was interesting as well, the exception there where we did see a negative number. But taking a look at your portfolio, what do you think is going to be driving that RevPAR? Is it more about the volume and how many people you bring in, therefore occupancy driven? Or can you actually have the ability to bring up those room rates? Well, in the short term, the biggest uh, drive for us will be the Peninsula Beijing, where we've just completed a major renovation. Now, we call it a renovation. It's actually a new hotel. We've combined two hotel guest rooms into one, and it's become an all-suite hotel. Mm. That has only f uh, been fully open for about a week. So we're hoping to really drive the revenue coming from that. I think the general answer to your question is that the world is a very competitive place for luxury hotels nowadays. So in order to drive RevPAR, generally you have to improve the quality of your product, which is why we keep on investing in renovations, just trying to keep up and improve the quality all the time. Does that mean, Clement, that you're uh, going to continue to expand, but expand slowly and stay a smaller hotel, a hotel operator? Yes, Betty, that's always been our philosophy. We stay small. We believe in owning our properties. So at the moment, there are only 10 Peninsula hotels around the world. We have three new projects which are ongoing, which are in London, Istanbul, and Yangon in Myanmar. We'll focus on that small number of projects, but we will always want to be an investor. We're owning those projects and focused on improving the quality of each one as well. Clement, I'm curious how the lower dollar is playing into, uh, you know, I into your, uh, your growth, your occupancy, your, the booking of your hotel rooms, how the, how the weaker uh, greenback has, uh, has affected your hotel chain. Well, the main thing I would say is that we always uh, match our currency. So in whichever uh, market we do business, we're financing in the local currency, and we try and minimize our currency exposure. So the only impact is sometimes, of course, uh, travelers might be affected by currency in terms of whether something's become a little bit cheaper or more expensive for them. But, you know, at our end of the market, the so-called super high end, uh, that is not usually much of a factor. But costs, though, I mean, it still seems to be quite an issue for you and you're handling just a handful of hotels. Is that ever a swing factor for you in looking into the licensing model? Uh, well, the cost issue comes because it's so expensive to build hotels at this level. Right. Um, you know, our guest rooms have all of the best technology and, you know, the best materials being used in the rooms and so on. And also to provide the service, then, you know, that cost equation mm -hmm. comes into play. So it's always a question of balancing between quality and making the cost affordable, but then being able to earn the margins through uh, charging the, the room rates for that product.
Uh, Clement, just really quickly on this uh, report here about your second largest shareholder raising the stake. Uh, you know, the, the shareholder coming out saying, look, you know, this is not uh, uh, this is not cover for a takeover of your pro of your hotel group. But, you know, that is out there now. So, you know, are you, you, you know, do you feel that you are now the target of a takeover? Is your hotel group for sale? Hmm. The hotel group is definitely not for sale. And the important point here is that although we're a publicly listed company, the Kaduri family holds over 50%. So actually, this company is takeover proof unless the Kaduris choose to sell. I think what has happened is that the shareholder coming in to buy shares into our company has actually highlighted to people the value in our shares because our net asset value per share is more than $25 per share, whereas the shares have been trading at less than 10. So with the new shareholder coming in, that's driven the share price up, partly because that's made people realize that we have such a large NAV discount at the moment that people feel there's value. We have fabulous assets in our balance sheet, which the share price was probably not reflecting un until more recently.